Imagine a time when television screens were mere portals to a simpler, more adventurous world. It's a warm, nostalgic evening, and you're curled up on the couch, bathed in the gentle glow of your trusty old TV set. The year is 1957, and the theme music for a show you've never heard of starts playing. As those melodious notes tinkle through the room, you're drawn into a world where the Old West is a place of wit, charm, and cunning, and your guide through this delightful frontier is a man named Brett Maverick. Your first encounter with the 1957 TV series Maverick was an introduction to a charismatic anti-hero. You watched in awe as James Garner's sly grin and clever one-liners kept you on the edge of your seat, wondering just how head outsmart the next adversary or win the next card game. It was a show that combined humor, danger, and the thrill of the Wild West in a way you'd never seen before. As you reminisce about Maverick, perhaps you recall memorable moments like a high-stakes poker game, the witty banter between Brett and his fellow gamblers, or the exhilarating showdowns with gunslingers. These were the moments that made you laugh, gasp, and applaud all at once. But what's the story behind this iconic show? Let's delve into some random facts about Maverick that might just surprise you. Certainly, let's go with the second idea about Sir Roger Moore's experience when joining the cast of Maverick. According to Sir Roger Moore in his autobiography, he was assured that he was not being brought in to replace James Garner, a prominent actor in the series. However, when he went to the costume department, all his clothes had the name Jim Garner semi-scratched out on them. This peculiar incident hints at some behind-the-scenes drama and a possible change in the original plan for Moore's role in the show. Maverick was a popular TV series that aired in 1957. While it entertained millions with its comedic take on the Wild West, it seems there might have been more than met the eye when it came to casting decisions. Sir Roger Moore's revelation about the scratched-out name on his costumes raises questions about the dynamics within the production team. Although Moore was brought in with the understanding that he wasn't replacing James Garner, it appears that there may have been some ambiguity or a shift in plans. This incident serves as a curious footnote in the show's history, hinting at the complexities that often go on behind the camera in the world of television. In any case, Maverick remains a classic TV series, and the mysterious alteration of costumes only adds to the intrigue surrounding its production. It's a reminder that even in the world of showbiz, things aren't always what they seem. In the 1957 TV series Maverick, a couple of notable names were considered for the role of Bart Maverick. Rod Taylor and Stuart Whitman were among the actors in the running for the part. However, the role eventually went to James Garner, who became known for his portrayal of Bart Maverick. Sir Roger Moore, who later joined the series, left due to what he perceived as a decline in script quality. Moore expressed that he would have been willing to stay if the scripts matched the quality of the earlier Garner scripts from the show's earlier seasons. Jack Kelly, who played Bart Maverick's brother Bo Maverick, used an interesting slogan during his campaign for mayor of Huntington Beach, California. His slogan was Let Maverick Solve Your Problems. This campaign strategy added a touch of the show's charm to real-life politics. These tidbits offer a glimpse into the behind-the-scenes and real-life connections of the popular 1957 TV series Maverick. The unworn dress and the role that got away in Maverick in the 1957 TV series Maverick, a curious twist of casting decisions and missed opportunities unfolded. While the show is best known for James Garner's portrayal of Brett Maverick, there are interesting anecdotes associated with other cast choices that could have significantly altered the show's course. One such incident involved Robert Colbert, who was cast as Brent Maverick. Producers picked him because of his uncanny resemblance to James Garner and even instructed him to don an identical costume. The obvious comparisons didn't sit well with Colbert, who humorously quipped, put me in a dress and call me Brenda, but don't do this to me. This remark underlines the pressure and expectations he faced in emulating the iconic Garner, though he ultimately made his mark in the series. Another missed opportunity involved Sir Sean Connery, who was offered the role of Beauregard Beau Maverick but declined. It's a decision that foreshadowed Connery's iconic role as James Bond, a part that would eventually be assumed by Sir Roger Moore years later. The intriguing connection between Connery and Moore adds a layer of curiosity to the show's history. On a lighter note, Sir Roger Moore shared a heartwarming anecdote from his time on set. 
He mentioned that when his parents visited, his mother, a fervent Western fan, had the chance to meet guest star Lee Van Cleef, one of her favorite actors. This personal touch showcases the human side of the Maverick set, where real-life connections were forged amid the glitz of Hollywood. These anecdotes provide an interesting glimpse into the behind-the-scenes dynamics of Maverick. The show, known for its humor and charm, certainly had its share of off-screen tales that added to its enduring appeal. In 1960, James Garner sued the Warner Brothers studio for breach of contract. This was because he got suspended during the writer's strike of that year. Warner's claimed there were no scripts available during the strike, so they were okay to suspend Garner without pay. But during the court testimony, it came out that the studio had secretly obtained about a hundred television scripts during the strike. The Los Angeles Superior Court decided in favor of Garner, and he was let go from his contract with the series. That's the scoop on the legal tangle James Garner had with Warner Brothers in 1960 over the Maverick series. Garner felt he got a raw deal, and the court agreed with him. And that's the story of how Garner got out of his Maverick contract in 1960. James Garner's creative solution turned Maverick into a comedy hit in the world of classic television. Maverick stands as a notable Western series that hit the airwaves in 1957. It starred James Garner as Brett Maverick, a card-playing gambler making his way through the Old West. While the show initially aimed for a more traditional tone, a creative solution by Garner led it in a different direction, turning it into a semi-comedic hit. During one day of filming, the crew faced a time crunch. They had less than an hour before overtime pay would kick in, and a complex fight scene still needed to be shot. Garner, ever the quick thinker, spotted a patch of tall weeds and suggested an unorthodox approach. He would throw his opponent into the weeds, and the fight would proceed with vigorous shaking of the plants, people being ejected from the foliage, only to promptly dash back in. The results were unexpectedly humorous, and this incident marked the turning point for the series. Following this incident, the cast and crew started seeking amusing ways to cut corners, infusing a light-hearted spirit into the show. The series gradually shifted from its original serious tone to incorporate comedy elements, which contributed to its success. In the words of James Garner, the transformation of Maverick was sparked by an impromptu idea to save time, but it ultimately became a defining feature of the show. The series evolved into a unique blend of Western adventure and comedy that captivated viewers. The decision to infuse humor into the show paid off handsomely. Maverick quickly gained popularity and became an iconic series, with James Garner's portrayal of Brett Maverick remaining a beloved character in television history. The show's shift from traditional Western seriousness to humor set it apart, making it an enduring classic in the world of television. So, James Garner's quick thinking during a time crunch not only saved production costs, but also reshaped the very essence of Maverick, making it an iconic and memorable series that has stood the test of time. As we bid adieu to the enthralling world of 1,957 seconds timeless TV series, Maverick, it's the perfect moment to embark on a journey down memory lane. Maverick, with its charismatic characters, daring escapades, and sly humor, has undoubtedly left an indelible mark on our hearts. But the real magic lies in the personal connection we've all forged with it. Maverick wasn't just a show, it was an invitation to partake in the Wild West's audacious adventures from the comfort of your living room. James Garner's portrayal of Brett Maverick and Jack Kelly's depiction of Bart Maverick were as much a part of our lives as the stories they brought to life on the screen. The series was a blend of wit, charm, and high-stakes poker games, but it was also a mirror reflecting our own hopes, dreams, and, perhaps, a touch of our roguish spirit. Now, it's your turn to share your cherished memories and reflections. What moments made you laugh, gasp, or ponder? Who was your favorite character? What did Maverick mean to you? Whether it's the cunning schemes, the camaraderie, or the unforgettable theme music, we want to hear it all. Join in the conversation and let's celebrate the enduring legacy of Maverick together. Thank you for taking the time to reminisce and share your thoughts with us. It's been a pleasure connecting over this beloved classic. Well, eagerly await your tales of Maverick, and until then, stay as daring as Brett and as quick-witted as Bart.